Welcome to Emily Carr. Emily Carr has always been a school that has focused on assessment and evaluation. So moving to a modern learning focus where the learning is through making is a natural extension of what we have already been doing in the classroom. Today we are going to feature a snapshot of students who have um, designed their own projects which often provide solutions to complex problems. And what we're going to see when we talk to these students and see what they've produced is that this type of learning creates the most um, effective and engaged learner. Uh, students learned a lot from this project. I, I think uh, one of the key learnings was uh, how to work with other students and overcome many challenges. Uh, they learned how to be resilient and persevere uh, when things didn't work out as expected. Uh, also, students learn uh, that theory assumes a perfect world and real life requires many other factors that need to be considered. Uh, this required them to be critical thinkers and, problems, uh, and good problem solvers. And lastly, students learned and appreciated the uh, mental and physical requirements to the process of designing a product under specific criteria and constraints. It took a lot of time and effort and determination to be able to create, build, and actually finish this coaster. Like it took hours, and I'm not talking like five or six hours, I'm talking like five or six all-nighters. So throughout the entire process of actually building the roller coaster, it took a lot of different skills that we had to like, develop and learn. One of them is like just cutting the wood and getting the correct measurements. So we actually went through like a lot of planks of wood just because we didn't get the correct measurements each time. So the most difficult part was actually the measurements on how much space we can allocate to each specific level because each, the angle it needs depends on the speed the marble will have going through the entire coaster. So we got to represent Emily Carr at Wonderland. So we got to Wonderland and first of all it was pouring rain so we had to figure out a way to move our project from the entrance parking lot to um, the site where we, where we would be presenting the coaster. So we figured out through this entire process that our coaster was very finicky. So like um, the leveling of the bottom, or if you altered the loops, um, the coaster wouldn't work all the way through. We got there and we determined that the coaster didn't work when we dropped the marble down at the first time. So we were really nervous because we didn't want to disappoint our teacher, Mr. O, and because we had put so many hours of effort into building this coaster. So um, we remained calm. We put cards under the bottom to make sure that it was level. We fixed all the loops and then it actually worked and that was like a really, really amazing feeling. And we ended up winning the roller coaster competition and representing Emily Carr. I believe this is one experience that they will never forget. They may forget me, they may forget <laughs> the school, but they won't forget what they experienced and uh, more importantly how they felt at the end. The creative challenge for this project was for students to create an original mixed media composition that was inspired by cultural influences important to the students. They had to combine a landscape, an image of a figure or an animal, and a pattern that was based on a repeated motif from cultural influences that were significant to the students. Three main components of this piece were the figure, landscape, and print. So I uh, made sort of just a list and wrote down all my ideas about what I already New. I learned how to make different aspects of my art stand out uh, by using watercolor for sort of a softer background and then acrylic for the streetcar and the figure to make them really stand out. And then I also kind of relearned how to make a print, which we did in grade 9. The learning that I saw take place in the classroom was students really engaging in the creative process. They had conversations with family members, they talked about um, what made them Canadians. Um, they looked for images, they looked for resources, they used the internet, photographs, um, to look for pictures that would really materialize what they wanted to say, what their personal narrative wanted to say. They also had to use uh, mathematics to plan out their composition. Um, there was a printmaking component, so they had to make sure that uh, the print uh, fit nicely into their image, um, and by repeating the motif, um, it would make a pleasing composition. So what I wanted to incorporate for this project was I wanted to sort of show my Canadian heritage and my Sikh uh, heritage as well. So um, I sort of like to tell a story for my artwork. So what I chose to do was I wanted to, through symbolism, sort of tell a story of my mother when she first came to Canada. So that's why I sort of wanted to incorporate here. So a woman in traditional Punjabi uh, clothing and then she's sort of looking at like a Canadian fall landscape. Um, I had a couple of challenges and drawbacks with this. 
Um, I really, really wanted to start off with a fall landscape, but I wasn't really sure how to do it because I never painted nature on a, like, a grand scale like that. But yeah, I feel like I really did overcome these challenges and I learned a lot more techniques that I wasn't aware of before. And it was a really, really good learning experience. And I feel the internet is a great source for all of us to learn from. We should definitely take advantage of it. There's a lot more things to do on it. And I learned a lot from this um, project as well, from other people's projects as well. Um, what I really liked about it was we really got to make our own piece. It wasn't very like structured like, hey, do this, don't do this, don't do this. Um, everybody sort of explored it. Like when you looked at everybody's as a total at the end, everybody had very, very different pieces. And it was very nice to see everybody's own creativity, put their own passion into it. Um, I feel mine is a very, very great representation of mine, and when I showed it to my mom, she loved it. So the purpose of the project, the Electricity Model Home, was for students to be able to apply their knowledge that they've learned in class on how to build circuits um, and switches and apply it to the real world of how houses are actually built. Um, and students were able to build their own houses, they were building their own uh, switches, and they were critically thinking of how to problem solve to fit a certain criteria. Um, in building their house. So they were able to take their passion for science, their passion for hands-on creative thinking and put them together into one. Um, and it was great to see the students working, engaging with each other um, and, and learning through the entire experience as well. For this project, we had a lot of creative freedom to do what we wanted. With this in mind, uh, my partner and I chose to do a two-story house with two bedrooms, a washroom in the back, a living and kitchen space. We felt that these days, um, houses are two stories, and we want to reflect that by using wood rather than a shoebox. My partner and I got ideas from our dads, which um, they're very hands-on with building projects, and that's the way how we got the house. For this project, there was a lot of planning. At the beginning, I made a circuit drawing, and I wanted to replicate that at the back of my house, but it didn't work. I had a lot of trouble with the master switch and turning on and off the lights individually between the rooms. So since it didn't work the first time, I had to make a new plan. After asking my teacher, um, my parents, and watching a couple videos, I created a new plan that fit the requirements of the project and it worked. When we finished our project, I was, me and my partner were really relieved because we finished successfully and actually getting to physically work with the materials expanded my understanding of working with circuits because you never get the same understanding until you actually work with the materials. Um, and you may have all the knowledge, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have the application to put it together properly. So one methodology that we at Emily Carr strongly believe in is learning by doing. We firmly believe that this approach is one of the potent tools out there for them to learn, to engage, and really retain the information. So for the optics units, we had students build some technological devices, such as cameras, uh, telescopes, periscopes, even a TV. So they had to use their laws of reflection, properties of light, in order to build this device. They were able to apply their theoretical knowledge learned in the class into a practical real-life application, and hopefully this will leave a lasting impressions on their mind. Okay, so this is my pinhole camera I built in grade 10 uh, science, and through this project, we were supposed to apply the knowledge we learned from physics and build something out of it, which was the camera. Um, from this project, I encountered numerous uh, problems that did set me back, such as I didn't know where to start in terms of my design process. By looking up information, talking to my teachers, and taking loss into consideration, I was able to have a platform to start off. And when I built off from that platform, I came up with the outward, the closed box, but it wasn't really taking a picture, so I learned. I remember learning about mirrors, and by effectively using the knowledge I've learned from the course, I was able to uh, came, use the converging lens, which resulted in focusing in order for the image to come out clearer and sharper. When I presented my project, I felt very accomplished because I never knew what I was capable of doing. And to be honest, I wouldn't have considered science if it wasn't for like as a career path. If by through building this, I was I was like I'm really interested in science and I really wanted to pursue this. So that kind of sparked my interest, and I never knew I was capable of doing such great greater things. And now I know for future advanced projects that I'm capable of doing anything if I put my mind to it. Okay, so. Uh, when you place the phone here, 
all of the light is um, reflected in this mirror and it passes through these two uh, convex lenses. Uh, the first lens is going to magnify the image but it's also going to flip it upside down and the second lens is going to magnify it again but it's going to flip it back so that you can see it upright. I really enjoyed this project because uh, unlike other projects where you're doing more theoretical things, uh, we actually got to use our hands and, and, and see how these things work um, uh, on, in real life. So we were able to have these lenses and mirrors in our hands and see how they work when you put them all together. Um, this doesn't really happen often in classes and I, I really enjoy doing that. So the project that my students did in grade 11 biology is they created a storybook for students in grade 3 and the theme of the book was how my plant changed the world. Um, the goal that students had were they were supposed to take grade 11 plant curriculum concepts and apply them um, and create a storybook that a student in grade 3 would understand. Um, I think the most rewarding aspect of this project for me was to see students um, enjoy plants and they were so engaged through this project, you know, through the research, the planning, proposing. Um, they spent so much time discussing their storybooks with one another and having conversations, researching online, looking at how to draw. Um, and I think the takeaway of this project was, um, this is a project that they're really going to remember. And a lot of the students said to me that they wish that they could keep the projects, um, you know, and, and showcase them wherever they went. And I promised them that I'd showcase them because of how proud I was of the work that they had done. Well, this is my book, The Tea Plant, How It Changed the World. And um, I learned a lot through making this book. Um, the research was a lot, um, but because we had to explain it through simpler terms, it actually helped me understand it better also. It's like I got to kind of reflect back to what it was like being a kid and like what I would enjoy. Like I tried to make the whole thing rhyme and make like visuals that were cute and make characters out of like a plant. And it was just nice because it was like it, sh it showed me that I could do a project and it wasn't just like for the marks, it was I could have fun and like create something where I was learning still and like enjoying everything while I was doing it. it was so, that, that was a challenge for me, just finding ways to um, introduce new topics and make uh, everyone understand it. And I think also this put me in like the teacher's perspective because um, I had to put it in a way that everyone would understand, just not like myself. And I think that was hard for me because that's not my strength as a student. Um, but I overcame it by just understanding, really understanding all the information I was getting, like through the research that I had to do and just drawing pictures and really visualizing it. I think that helped me because I'm a visual learner. Um, I liked everything. I think I liked the most part was researching about my olive tree. And I talked to my grandfather who was from Badi, that's where olive trees grow. And he was really happy that I was choosing something from his culture and his town. And I related it to school subjects, including science, which I love. And it was just an amazing experience overall. I had a lot of fun with it. So like, I was really excited Like once I got all my like research together. Like writing the story was like so fun for me. Like I actually like really enjoyed it. And like drawing the pictures as well. Like I really like visual arts. So like I decided to like paint the whole book. I was like so like happy with it like in the end. And like I really wanted to keep it too, but like <laughs> I had to hand it in. So <laughs> but yeah, that's what I <laughs> Through the process of learning through making, we are, we as students are better able to understand concepts learned in class and apply them to the real real world. Personally, I find that through making, I'm better able to apply concepts and understand what is learned. Thank you for joining us here at Emily Carr, and we hope you come visit soon.